Hi. Trading the RSI alone the classic way, looking for overbought and oversold areas, simply doesn't work. There's an easier way using support and resistance levels together with the RSI to improve our entry points. But here's the thing. Instead of using overbought and oversold areas, we will use the RSI to detect the trend momentum. It's the opposite of what we may have learned so far in classic trading tutorials online and so on, but it seems to be more effective. And when I tried this test in Python, the results seemed more interesting. In this video, we will go through the trading strategy details and to test our approach, we will automate our indicators in Python, check the signals on the chart and evaluate what we obtain. You can download the Python code for free from the link in the description below. I always share the codes on this channel, just like we have done for the previous videos. And if you really like coding, it's also possible to use the code and apply some modifications to generate trading alerts if you are into algorithmic trading, which is also a good addition to our trading system. So first we need to detect support and resistance levels. And to do this, we will start by detecting fractals or candles showing extreme high and extreme low values compared to the neighboring candles. For example, this candle has a high value greater than its surrounding candles and the number of candles to compare with is left as a variable in our code so we can compare with four, five or any number of candles on the left and the right side of the central candle. I usually use a number between four to eight candles on each side for this kind of comparisons. And here's another example. We have a low fractal which is lower than the other candles on the left and the future candles on the right of this particular value. I also added a condition on the candle wick length. Sometimes if you want to be very selective with your fractals, you might want to select candles showing a strong rejection movement. So a candle wick exceeding a certain threshold, which is basically a variable in our code, can be considered as a strong rejection movement. So now we have our first set of support and resistance levels detected with these fractals. And we can notice that some levels are very close to each other so they can be merged into one level. The way to do this is simply by computing the difference or the distance between the different levels. And if this difference is lower than a distance threshold, we can merge close levels either by replacing them by the mean value level or simply by erasing the duplicated levels and keeping just one. So most importantly, we probe the clusters of levels and we replace them by one value. Now that we have our key levels, we can compute our reversal signals. This is done based on three assumptions. First, we need a candle with a wick or a tail close enough to a support or a resistance level. And the candle's body should be contained by the level. If it's a support, the body should be above the level and if it's a resistance the body of the candle should stay below the level it's only the wick that's going to get close or exceed the current level we also need the previous candles to be contained by the resistance support level meaning they should be on the same side of the current candles body okay let's see this in an example i'm taking these two levels for this example we can see the fractals where these levels were detected so we have this one high and this one low then the price movement reaches this point where our conditions are met. We have an extreme value that is close to this support level. The body of the candle is totally above the support and the same is for the previous candles that are all contained by the same key level and on the same side of the rejection candle. This is a typical reversal signal. Also, if we add the candle wick condition, we have a long rejection reaction. We can see the price bouncing and being rejected by the same support many times. And in real life, honestly, I might have considered an entry point at one of these bouncing rejections. So if we apply these conditions on historical data, we can see the signals on this chart. When the purple signal point is below the candle, this means it's a bullish reversal and the opposite means a bearish reversal. Notice the number of signals we are obtaining. It's impossible to trade with all of these on the chart. Some of them are excellent entry points and some are less impressive, of course. So this one is a very good one. So we have a bearish signal, which is followed by a strong bearish movement. This one is a good one. We have a bullish signal followed by a good bullish movement and so on but others are not working as well this is where we need the rsi to filter these signals if the rsi is higher than a threshold value we have an uptrend momentum so we only keep the bullish signals and in the opposite case where the rsi is below a lower threshold we have a downtrend momentum and we only keep bearish signals this way we only keep signals that are going along the trend because we consider that the trend is our friend okay 
So Python time, let's write all of it into a code and test our indicator. So this is our Jupyter notebook file. I'm using the Euro US dollar candlesticks one hour time frame between 2003 and 2023. So this is our whole data frame that I'm loading using pandas. I'm filtering the zero volume candles where we had weekends and no trade market. I'm resetting the index and I'm adding the RSI using the pandas technical analysis library. And just for the sake of this demo, I'm only considering 2000 rows. I'm not taking the whole uh, data frame just so we can have a clear visualization when we are plotting these. To detect our fractals, we're using these two functions. We have a low fractal, I called it support. So we have a support function that's going to detect a low fractal candle and the resistance candles are detected using this function. Notice that those functions, they take a data frame as an argument, then a current candles index to be tested if it's a support or resistance candle or a fractal. And then the N1 and N2 are the numbers of candles before and after the current candle to be compared with. So remember, we're comparing the high wick or the highest price of the current candle or the lowest price of the current candle with the uh, minimum prices of the neighboring candles. So N1 is the number of candles on the left and N2 is the number of candles on the right for the comparison. Then we have other two functions, close to resistance and close to support. And these functions, they will detect if a certain candle is getting close enough to a resistance, taking into account the conditions that we have already explained in the previous part of this video. So remember, we need to have the body of the candle above the uh, support level, and we need the wick to be close enough to that particular key level, whether it's a support or resistance. These functions, they take an index of the current candle that we want to test if it's close enough to a resistance or to a support level. We're going to feed also a list of levels. So these are the key levels values, the prices where the levels are, the uh, limit, meaning the distance within which we are going to consider that the uh, candle wick is close enough to uh, one of these levels and the data frame where all the data is stored. Okay, so now we have these four functions so far. We can detect fractals, support fractals, resistance fractals. We can add the wick threshold if needed, but for this demo, I'm not adding it. I just put a very low threshold. So basically all the fractals are going to be considered. Then we have another set of functions that are able to return if a candle is close enough and contained by a support or resistance level. Now we need to test the previous candles as well, because remember we needed three different conditions. And the last one is that the neighboring candles or the previous candles to the current candle should also be contained by the same resistance or support level. And this is where we are testing this. This function takes L, which is the index of the current candle that we are testing. Level underscore back candles is the number of back candles we would like to test. So you might want to test, for example, for the previous three, four, five or six or even 10 back candles that should be also contained by the same support or resistance level. And we have the level that we are willing to test and the data frame containing all the data. So these two functions are going to check not the current candle, but the previous candles, if they are contained by the uh, key level that we're going to pass the value here as an argument. So now we have all the elements to generate a signal. I'm defining a new function called check candle signal. It takes an index of a current candle that I would like to test the N1 and two parameters candles on the left and the right to be considered the number of back candles to check for uh, if they are contained by the same key level and the data frame containing all the data. In the first part, we're going to declare two lists, empty lists, the support and the resistance levels list, and we're going to use the uh, support and the resistance functions to compute these levels and append them into these lists. So we have two lists, a list containing the support levels and one containing the resistance levels. We're going to merge all the levels that are close to each others in this part of the code, and I'm considering a distance here, 0 0.0001. So this is for Euro US dollar. You can change the distance if you want and experiment on it. From here, we can proceed in two ways. Either we keep those two lists split. So the support and resistance levels split into two different lists and we're going to treat them uh, separately. Or we can consider that the same level can act as a support and a resistance at the same time, depending where the price is heading. 
So in this case, we can merge also both lists into resistance and support, which is a new list, and we sort it, and we can further improve our merging because some support levels are very close to some resistance levels, which is basically the same zone or the same level. And this is the correct way of doing it, in my opinion. Having the least amount of key levels will clarify your chart and will avoid all the clutter with so many levels. So in this part of the code, we are concatenating those lists of resistance and support levels, and then we are merging those levels that are very close to each other's. Then we use the uh, close resistance and close to support functions to generate a small signal here, and we combine everything in this line to generate a new signal. So if we have a candle that is close to resistance and its neighbors or the previous candles are below the resistance, the six previous candles, and at the same time, the RSI of the current candle or the preceding candle is below 45, then we return one, which is a bearish signal because we are approaching a resistance level from below with the candle is climbing up then we have one candle very close to that particular resistance level. And at the same time, we are in a downtrend movement or we have a downtrend momentum because the RSI is below 45. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe you can take an average value of the RSI of the last four or five candles. It might make more sense. I'm adding a small comment here so we don't forget in case you want to experiment on this one. Then in the same way, we can compute the bullish signal but this time we need an RSI that is above 55. These values are experimental. You can change any parameter in here and check what's happening to your code. I also needed to use some constants around here. So how close should one candle be to a resistance or support level to be considered in the zone of that particular level? So all of these are parameters that you can fine tune according to your preference. Okay, now we can compute the signal using those previous functions. I'm taking N1, meaning the left preceding candles are 8 to consider a support or resistance key, and N2 is equal to 6. The number of back candles 140, so for each candle I'm looking 140 hours before that candle. We're working on the hourly time frame, remember? So 140 hours, it's almost five days or one week, and this is enough to establish sufficient support and resistance levels for that particular week. We can take more, we can take two weeks or three weeks, depends on the time frame you are using. And that's it. Basically, we can compute the signal running the uh, check candle signal function, as we can see, and we get our signals. I'm just counting the number of signals that we are getting here, so how many signals bear signals we are getting, how many bullish signals we are getting at the same time. So we have 24 bullish signals and a bit more bearish signals. We have 42 bearish signals. And here I'm printing the uh, candles where those signals were generated. So we have candle with index 179, 180, and so on. This allows me to plot those signals or those particular candles on the chart. Let's plot, for example, uh, the candles between 100 and 300. So we're going to visualize all these signals here. So I'm going to select a slice of 100 up to um, 300. I'm going to plot this and we can see those purple points that we can increase in size, maybe size equal to eight. You can see better. Okay, so we have these purple points are our signals and we can see that the conditions are met, for example, at these candles. So we have um, a bearish signal, which is completely true because we have a certain support level here or a resistance level. We are hitting for the third time. And then it seems that all the conditions were met. We are approaching the uh, resistance level from below with all the candles and the current candles getting close enough. So we generate a bearish signal. And this was a great signal. Actually, if you look at it, if you put our entry position is at the closing point so of this candle here, our stop loss could have been somewhere around here and we could have put easily a two to one take profit stop loss ratio. So our risk to reward ratio is really great in this case. These are not good signals. So we would have been stopped here because we are in a downtrend and it seems that this is a support level that has been broken and at this point, we are reversing a bit and we expect the price to bounce on this support that became a resistance level and to continue down. And to be honest, in real life, I would have taken the trade as a short position. I wouldn't have taken 
a long position here because we are clearly in a downtrend and we are clearly approaching a support resistance level. So this would have been a great short position in my opinion. However, the market is not always on our side and this is one of the um, of the cases where you can see that even humans and algorithms fail at the same time. Then we have these cases. So these are signals, bullish signals. We are expecting the, uh, the price. It's in an uptrend. It's bouncing on a support resistance level. So we got those signals many times and then the price ended up bouncing up at the same time. So they are not very bad signals, but the price didn't move much after these signals. So we can't always control how long the price is going to continue with this, with the current trend. And we can't always control the, um, the volatility of the market. So maybe these are good entry points, but then where you put your stop loss, where you put your take profit, how do you manage your trade is a different story. And to make it a bit easier to test particular candles and check their signals, I made another function that's very similar to the previous one, only this time it takes few parameters that you're going to guess what these are because they are exactly the same as uh, the parameters we've been using so far in this in this code. It takes the index of one particular candle that we would like to test and it's going to plot the, um, the chart with the current candle, the uh, support resistance levels that we are considering that our algorithm has found and also it's going to return the signal of the uh, current candle. So here we have a bearish signal, a bearish reversal. Let me check which candle I'm running this for. So it's candle 231. So if I check 231, it's this candle. It's returning a bearish signal because we have a downtrend and this candle got close enough to a support resistance level, which is pretty strong level actually. The price did bounce many times on the same zone, but exactly this is the same case where we had a break through this uh, particular level and the price jumped up uh, very aggressively. And this is it for this uh, video. I hope it will help you detecting key levels in your strategy and incorporating this into your algorithmic trader so that you can improve and enhance your trading. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.